Good morning. Welcome to Shaw. It's good to come to the house of the Lord as we celebrate the change of the season and the promise of new things. Let's go to the good Lord in prayer now. Dear Heavenly Father, dear God, we thank you for this day. Thank you to be able to come to Shiloh and worship you, to sing from some good songs, to read from your good book, and we pray for a message this morning. Lord, we pray this morning for the family of Micah Curvin a young man who played football for the Mahaya High School who died this past week of a heart attack. We ask that you put comfort and grace with his family and the whole entire Mahaya community as we lift them up in prayer to help their hurting hearts and all our hurting hearts. As a community, we celebrate together, we grieve together, we rejoice together, and we comfort together. We just ask this in your blessings. In the name of your Son, Jesus. We pray you be with the saint of our church, Miss Tommy. Keep her upright and keep her going. Thank you for her inspiration. We pray for our little church family. Dancy and Tristan and Brittany and Becky and Roxanne and Daniel as it's growing as he's going to get married this following week this, on the 12th. Pray a bless, blessing upon their marriage and their future and a future that they will have here at Shiloh and a future with this church. Be with all those that are sick, all those that are hurting, all those that are in despair. Send the light and the darkness that we would continue to walk and to run and to be with you and be with your Son, Jesus Christ. And may your Holy Spirit cover us in all that we do. And let it be for your glory. And let us live in a land that is free. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
And for our scripture reading this morning, we're going to go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. Listen now to the word of God. Wherefore, seeing we are also surrounded by with a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down before the right hand of the throne of God. Praise be the Lord our God for these words. Amen. Would you pray with me now? Dear Heavenly Father, dear God, we thank you for these words of inspiration, these words of comfort. Looking to Jesus, that we would finish our faith at race with faith. Knowing that there's a cloud of witnesses always looking at us. Whether well, there's people here with us, people that have come before us, or people who are going to come after us. That we ran the race with grace and love and kindness and set aside the sin that easily trips us up and has looked to Jesus who finished the race with us and for us and broke his body and shed his blood for our sins. Let us go ourselves in his way and follow him. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
And as we begin our sermon today, let us turn once more in our Bibles to the book of Hebrews, the twelfth chapter, and the first and the second verse. I say again, Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. Listen now unto the words of Paul, the Apostle. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise be unto the Lord our God for these words. Amen. These verses, I believe, highlight another reason to not sin, one that is often overlooked, a reason that is beyond simply what sin does to us, the damage it causes, the damage that we do to ourselves in the pursuit of evil. And that other reason is what sin keeps us from becoming, how it holds us back from what God has truly meant us to be, like a runner who shows up on the day of the race tied down with weights. For when we think of why we do not do virtue, the excuses that we give to ourselves and others What are they? All too often is because we say we were busy. Because we had other things to do. And in so doing. And in so waiting. In so holding on to our sin. Instead of casting it aside. Think of what we have missed. Think of what we could have prepared for. Think of what we could have done if we had only cast aside our sin and run the race that was set before us. For a runner cannot win if he does not throw away the things that will hold him back. He cannot win if he does not train just like a seed cannot grow if the light is choked out by weeds surrounding it, keeping it from the nutrients it requires, so too can we not seek virtue if we are so caught up in sin. There are only so many hours in the day, so much space in our minds. So why do we keep holding on to our sin? Why do we keep giving it the space in our brains, in our hearts? It's because we are afraid to cast it off. We know the answer. It's because in our attachment to our sin, to what is comfortable, it has become dear to us. We have become used to it, attached to it so desirous of what we may have once had, that we cannot see what God is calling us to. And because maybe on some rare occasions, because that thing which was holding us back was once good, perhaps it did have some purpose, some virtue, but we have held on to it past It's time. It has become cancerous. Become a blight. A weight that is holding us back. Because 
Though our Father is immortal and unchanging, we as mortals are not eternal. We cannot be unchanging. All flesh must change if it is to survive. We cannot stay a child forever clinging to our toys and our pleasures, clinging to our lack of responsibility and our desire to simply brush off the struggles of the day. For as Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11, When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Praise be unto the Lord our God for these words. Amen. It is time for our souls to grow up, to cast aside the childish things that have held us back, to cast aside the things which weigh us down, the sins that we cling to that have gone on far past whatever whatever we first went to them for. It is time to cast aside what holds us back, what makes it impossible for us to move on, to run the race, to perform the will of God as He has commanded us. It is time to change, to end our sin, and to move on with our lives, continuing on in the path of God, in the path of righteousness, as we have been commanded, and not looking back. For as Christ himself declares in the Gospel of Luke, the ninth chapter and the 62nd verse, And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. And so, let us not look back. Let us cast aside these childish things, these weights which so easily beset us. Let us change. Let us be born again. Let us run the race and become what God has called us to be. Amen and Amen.
Receive now this benediction. Let us go from forth from here, running the race that's set before us, and doing it all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.